We're going to illustrate the linear least squares approach within CASA using this oxygen set of spectra and you can see here this is the overlay of all the oxygen spectra how the material oscillates between a silicon oxide and a titanium oxide and you can also see from this selection that has let me just illustrate that by holding the control key down and clicking you can see that the selection here represent a set of spectra and these spectra include from the titanium layer and a number that come from the silicon layers and these are clearly are moving around so a linear least squares apply to a, a silicon oxide layer in this particular experiment would not work well if we chose just a single peak however the titanium will work reasonably well with with one representative peak for the titanium so what we will do is we will find a titanium peak and let me just see that that one is that's the titanium that I was interested in whereas that one is a silicon so I think we've now got a set of peaks here which we can use as basis spectra and these oscillations in the silicon will be picked up by the linear squares on the basis that we've we will include all of these shifted peaks they're reasonably correlated but hopefully they're not too correlated that they will cause problems for the calculation and there's one further thing that we need to do and that is to have a look at a spectrum where neither the titanium oxide nor the silicon oxide is included in the material and that's towards the end of the profile so this spectrum here is also one that I need to include in my basis set it's this black line here that I've included so now what we're going to do let me just delete that tile so we're down to one and set one tile per page so what we're going to do is use these to represent shifted silicon peaks these are uh, O1S silicon peaks a single titanium oxide O1S peak and something that is uh, representative of what happens once these have both gone away and we'll do that by displaying the ones that we can use for the basis vectors here in the active tile bring up the spectrum processing dialog window we're going to look at the principal component analysis property page and having selected all of these oxygen 1s peaks I'm going to press the generate spectra button and what this will do is create a new file and for each selected spectrum the basis spectra that were in the active tile in the previous file are transferred over here and they all scaled according to the the size the contribution of each one of these towards the, the spectrum and the sum of all of these weighted vectors is here in the processed form so when I overlay these two we should see a pair of spectra and you can see there's a black and a red one and the the let's just verify by putting up a key so the first one is the black the second one is the red so the first one is the original data the second one is the process data and you can see the red one is an approximation to the the black one and that's obtained by a linear combination of predominantly two forms one is the uh, blue one and the green one that's the one that came that's the sort of baseline type measurement without either the silicon uh, or the titanium oxides being in the material so if I step down this list you can see how as I go through I find spectra 
are approximated by the red one the black one is the spectrum the red one is the approximation based on the sum of these shapes that you see here appearing as component shapes and for the most part we have good approximations now I did observe one where there was not such a good approximation and this is an example of where the linearly squares failed to to account for a term this, this, ter this dip here suggests that we don't have a peak and we need to go and look for a peak if we wanted to do a full analysis of this but for the most part we have a, a reasonable approximation here so in order to differentiate between the different states, this titanium and the uh, silicon oxides, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these component peaks and I'm going to copy them into the original data file. So this is the one that the depth profile had the initial depth profile had been calculated from and if I use the copy and I'm going to copy the data as it's prepared you can now see that the file has been supplemented in addition to the original oxygen I've also got potential component peaks and what I need to do is first of all say well that's neither so when I bring up my region I need to identify this one now as being other and what I'll do is I'll propagate that to all of the ones that are not part of the multi-layer material but we've moved into the silicon uh, then we've got that's the silicon well we need to find that's the titanium so I'm going to make this one TiO2 again I'm going to propagate that region so having propagated the region I've got oxygen I've got titanium silicon oxygen carbon and all of these components that are the components are differentiated into three different types so I don't want to have the original oxygen involved so I will overlay those select all and hold the control key down to deselect the items that are in the active tile so I've now got myself a selection that includes all of the spectra for which the regions are defined where a profile will make sense and now I need to copy the regions through again so I've got titanium silicon carbon that's the oxygen that is silicon uh, silicon dioxide oxygen that's the bit that's not either of them and that's the titanium so when I press the area report what I will get is a profile which now includes a contribution from let me just move that to the other side there. we've got carbon oxygen that is from the silicon oxide oxygen that's not either of the titanium or the silicon oxides that's the t titanium oxide that's the silicon signal and that's the titanium signal so if we wanted to just verify that this makes sense if I select these trace that I have assigned to the silicon and the silicon and overlay them uh, that's good news because they line up so the, we have differentiated the silicon layers using both silicon and the oxygen and you can see that towards the end the silicon turns into an elemental form without any oxygen.